Good morning. Well, I'm Josie Stone, for those of you who don't know, and I am the co-chair uh, with uh, uh, Pastor Curtis Price of the Interfaith Roundtable this year. And he sent his regrets. He wasn't able to come today. But um, I'm happy to be here. New adventure to be out here. And thank you so much for uh, hosting this today for us. Um, I just have three annou few announcements before we have a prayer, and then we can continue into the program. Um, thank you to everybody who attended the, co the, the uh, concert at the Tabernacle on Sunday night. It was so fabulous. Best ever, we felt. And we probably had close to 2,000 people there, so that was really good. Very good. But all of the acts were just outstanding. Just fabulous, fabulous. Um, very happy to be here, and thank you to our hosting members today. I just wanted to mention a little bit about membership, and that is a lot of you come for our lunches, and that's, that's great. We do have a membership, but it's an annual membership of $25. Um, the reason we have that is it isn't a huge amount of money, but we need it for things like, for instance, on, the, on Sunday, we had to print all the programs, and there were 2,000 of those, and we pay for that, and we pay for the flowers that are given to Carol Makita and things. So there are things like that, as well as business paper and so forth that um, Wendy needs. So um, you don't, if you're, uh, this year we finish in May, so you don't need to pay for this year, but next year when you sign up or if you want to do it in May, just pay your $25 for next year, and um, then that helps us a lot as an organization. Thank you. Um, and then uh, I sent you, gave you Curtis's regrets. And I think that's about it for now. Does anybody have any questions before I sit down? No? Then we'll continue with our opening prayer, and I'll give the program over to you. And thank you so much for having us here. Thank you, Josie. <clears throat> so, yes, let's start with a prayer. I invite you to just let your eyes close, take in a nice deep breath. <sighs> and I start with gratitude. I am grateful for this beautiful, beautiful spring-like day. Grateful for the sunshine, grateful for the blooms on the trees and the blossoms coming out of the ground. Grateful for this beautiful community, this interfaith community, and grateful for this home of Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. I am grateful for all the volunteers that came together to, to make these beautiful, wonderful, nutritious lunches for us, and for all the people that have walked through these doors. I am most grateful to know that there is but one one power, one presence, one love. It doesn't matter what you call it, whether you call it God, Allah, Jehovah, Hashem, the way, the universe, love, force, whatever you call it, there's only this one presence, one power that's in and through all things everywhere, every moment of every day. So knowing that, I know I am unified with this one. I am the I am. I am the outpicturing. I am the hands, the mouthpiece, the feet of the one. Everything that I do is serving this one power and presence. And I know the same is true for everyone within earshot of this prayer. For everyone that's walked through these doors in the past, today, and in the future. That we are all here showing up as presence and power and love to do this work of spirit. So for this and so much more, I'm grateful to know that this time we spend together is blessed in so many ways. The blessings that we have come into are these beautiful souls that some we are meeting for the first time, some we are greeting because we've seen each other before, and I know that this changes our lives because we have now come together in community, breaking bread together, being in this sanctuary together. So the blessings are fully, fully happened in this moment. No waiting in God's time. It's done now, this meeting in God's heart and mind. It's already done and blesses all who have been here. So for this, I just release it unto the one. 
And I say, and so it is, amen, ashe. Thank you for being here. I'm Reverend Cindy, and I'm the senior minister here at Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. And uh, welcome in our home, our, our humble abode. Uh, we love it because the last facility we had was uh, very dark. It was a lot bigger, but we called it the cave. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be talking about visioning. And one of the things that came through visioning for our new home was something that was light and bright. So we have some, we have some coverings on these windows, but when they're open, boy, is it light in here. So that's one of the things that we knew, this is our home. So I wanted to start with the global vision for Centers for Spiritual Living. Now this is the global vision for, for all the Centers of Spiritual Living and we're a part of a bigger organization, right? So this is the vision for all of our community. I'm gonna read it and the words are behind me and on that monitor over there. We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. We see a world in which each and every person lives in alignment with their highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other. A world in which individuality and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. We envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought, a world where each and every person discovers their own personal power and ability to create an individual life that works within a world that works for everyone. We envision a world in which we live and grow as one global family that respects and honors the interconnectedness of all life a world where this kinship with all life prospers and connects through the guidance of spiritual wisdom and experience. We envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social conscience in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors, providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. We envision a world where each and every person has food, a home, a sense of belonging, a world of peace and harmony and enfranchisement and justice. We envision a world in which resources are valued, cared for and grown and where there is generous and continuous sharing of these resources. We envision a worldwide culture in which forgiveness, whether for errors, injustices, or debts, is the norm. We envision a world which has renewed its emphasis on beauty, nature, and love through the resurgence of creativity, art, and aesthetics. And finally, we envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. So that's what we're all about. And we're thrilled that you're here. And we wanted to tell you that we are a visioning community. Now it's not visualization, it's called visioning. And I'm not gonna go into the, the how <laughs> or why we do it because Reverend Myrna is gonna come up and do that She's actually going to guide us through the process and do some more explaining. But I just wanted to s tell you that the only reason I'm here as their senior minister, and this community was without a senior minister for, for about six years. The reason that I'm here is that this is a visioning community, and I am someone that uses visioning as a part of my life. And because we both connected in that way, here I am, and here we are. And if there was one gift that um, 
I could give this community because I've been to lots of luncheons. In fact, uh, my first month here, last January, January 2023, was uh, the first luncheon I came to was, I just moved here in January and I came to an interfaith luncheon. And what I uh, witnessed was beautiful how we all get together from all these different faiths and, and come together and share information. But I really wanted to gift this process to this community. So when we did our visioning on what this event would be, that's what came through. We're gonna teach this process that we believe in, that has changed our lives, the people that are in this community, that changed this community's life, and for sure my life. Because I never thought I'd be living in Utah let me tell you that, okay? So, <laughs> um, I'm going to introduce Reverend Myrna here now, and she's going to come up and do some teaching. Now, Reverend Myrna, um, she is, well, I call her the queen of visioning for this community. She's been, she's been leading our visioning team for years, and she, this is how she does her life through visioning. Um, she is a CSL minister here. She's also one of our beautiful prayer practitioners. And she is a cornerstone of this community. And I know that she's been a part of your interfaith community for years, and I wanted to give her the honor of doing this teaching. So welcome, Reverend Myrna. How's the food? Okay. Sorry we didn't have you sitting around a table, but you can see what we've got here. <laughs> After six years minister free, we, we really are just starting to become who we are again. It's been a while. So I'm really grateful that this lovely lady decided to leave San Francisco to live in the mountains. <laughs> I mean, would you make that change? Don't answer that question. <laughs> Oh, life is good, is it not? Is it a beautiful day? Yes. I am so glad that we can be here together. Thank you for coming. Who had parking problems? Yeah, we're, we're going to fix that next time. I'm not clear yet how, but if we fix it hard enough, it'll be a new building. Okay? That's paid for. <laughs> so the process of visioning is an interesting thing. Uh, the difference between visualization and visioning is that when you visualize, you use this brain to create something that sounds good. Now, Ralph Aldo Emerson said once that we should, quote, get our bloated nothingness out of the way. Have you heard that? <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what visioning does, because instead of using this old noodle to make decisions, we, we open to a higher possibility. Okay? And we do that through a process of meditation. So... Uh, we'll, we'll do this in a couple of minutes and you can be part of it, but I wanted to just talk about it a little minute first. Um, it gives us input from a higher source than us. Because if I make a decision knowing what I know, it, the, my decision is going to be all filled with all of the stuff that I know I can't do because I've never been able to do it. You know what I'm saying? We, getting our bloated nothingness out of the way simply means that we don't, don't stop with what we what we know we can do. I need that thing off the, off the desk. It, we don't stop with what we know we can do. We really use a higher source to get there. Um, we can do visioning alone or in a group. And when you, get, when you do things in a group, it's an interesting thing because different people in the group wind up with the same idea. Is that, have you ever experienced that? Like, yeah, a lot, don't you? So we take advantage of that, and when we're doing it together in a group, all, all kinds of wonderful things happen like that. You know, we, 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 we knew that she was coming for about a year before she got there. <laughs> we didn't know it would be her, but we knew we were going to have a perfect minister, and by golly, we do. So when you, when you do a visioning, the answers to the questions that we'll ask, there are five questions. The answers to the questions that we will ask, the fir your first idea is going to be, oh, I know the answer to that, and I can tell them already. I don't have to division. Does that make sense? Let that go. And let it just come from wherever it comes in your mind or in your soul or from the universe. And very often, 
it won't come as words. It'll come as a feeling or a picture or a color and maybe nothing at all. And all of that's okay, it doesn't matter. So we'll ask five questions. At the end of each question, we will stop for a minute and give you a chance to think about it or to, to let whatever comes in come in. And if we could do it differently, we, when I'm doing it in a group, we, everybody has a note paper and they can write on it. And so we, we'll stop between questions so that people can write things down. We don't have paper today, so we're not going to do that. But besides, we leave three to five minutes. Yeah, well, yeah, you can write on that. If I'd known that we were going to do it this way, I'd have left some space for it. But write along the margin. You know, write tiny. You can do that, too. Um, usually, we use three to five minutes between questions, and I think we probably won't do that this time. But I am going to wait until I'm sure you've, I've got your attention before we move to the next question. Okay, so uh, Raj is going to help us with this a little bit now. So the first thing we do is to set the vision. Okay, before we start asking the other questions, we want everybody to be on the same page if we're a group or somewhere close to the same page. So the first question is an important one. The first question is, what is the highest vision for whatever you're visioning for? So uh, we, we will say often, what is the highest vision for the Salt Lake Center in the next six months? Or what is the highest vision for our new board of trustees? Or what is our highest vision for having these people come into the community? So I want you to take a little minute to think about what you would want, like to vision for. What would you like to see happen in your life? And it can be as big as you want to make it. Think about that for a second. Hmm. You got it? Okay. Okay. Now I want you to get outside your head. We, we'll do no judgments at all. And, but here's the thing, we are meaning making machines. And your brain is going to want to, we're all fixers, aren't we? Most, most ministerial types are people who like to fix things. Yeah? Yeah. Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> we're not, there's nothing broken. There's only a possibility of more and greater as we go on. So hang on to that picture, and we're going to do that when we're visioning. But the next thing we do is to get out of our head, and, and, and then we ask the question, the next question. Well, the next four questions, once you've got that idea in mind, the, the rest of this is all about kind of making it more real. So, so we'll ask four questions that, that will kind of, kind of center that idea in your body and make it make it begin to come out out of order all of your head. So the next one, the next question is, what must I release to manifest this vision? Because once you've got something new to happen, there's got to be old stuff to release, doesn't there? Yeah, most usually when we get when we ask that question, people will answer by saying, we need to release the past. We need to release fear. We need to quit doing it the way we've always done it. Yeah, those, that's, those are the kind of thing. It's sort of like if you're down at the beach and, and you want to dig a hole in the sand. Yeah. So the next question after that is something that'll fill up that hole. Because if you don't fill it up with something you want, what's going to come back? The sand. So, so the first, four qu first question is what must I release? Then the second question is, what must I embrace? Because we need something to fill that empty space. And you can embrace all kinds of things. What would, what would, what would, what would, um, well, what's going to come into your head is not the same thing that would come into my head. But don't allow yourself, that these are all listed in the little brochure you've got. Um, but don't allow yourself to get judgmental, okay? If something shows up that doesn't make any sense at all, write it down. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. 
If something comes up that you think is completely impossible, that's your little brain deciding to be in charge again. Don't let that happen. You with me so far? Okay. The third step is a really interesting one because it kind of anchors this stuff. What gifts and talents and skills do I have right now that I can use in the, in the creation of this dream? Or what do we as a group have? What comes up for us is always the first thing that comes up, what gifts we have. We have a fabulous music group, and that always comes up. It begins to make it feel more real. Does that make sense? And then the last question is simply, what else do we need to talk about? Because there's, the interesting thing comes up then, too. Interesting things come up then. So who's got questions so far before we go into this? Anybody got anything they want to say or question? I must have done a good job of explaining either that or I've left you all behind. <laughs> who's asleep? <laughs> okay. okay. You ready to do this? Go like this. Go like this. Yes. We do, we do it two ways. Our entire community does it once a month. And then I have a team of people who uh, we meet also, also once a month. And we get really any kind of different answers because the group of people that have been doing it forever, uh, as this small group that got her here, uh, we've been doing it forever and we know what we're doing. And so we get bigger and larger and sometimes better results. But what happens when we do it as a community is really interesting because it helps people to get involved, because they feel like they're part of the decision-making process. And besides, we feed them. <laughs> but we have 20 or 30 people show up for that community visioning all the time. And we're a small group, so that's a large part of our, of our congregation. So we do it two ways. And then we visually, yeah, vision individually. So I know that uh, Rev. Cindy has been doing some visioning with the, with the music team to help them uh, set their path forward. Are we, are we doing the same thing with the youth, youth church and other pieces of the organization? So it's kind of endemic everywhere through our organization. And it's really a good thing. Who else has got a question? Yeah, Josie. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm not sure I understand totally. So the highest vision, is that related to you as a person or is that related, related to something in the world that you are concerned about? Yes. Both. <laughs> <laughs> if right. I were visioning and I were getting ready to decide to get out of Salt Lake City for a period of time on vacation, I would vision about the highest and best for my time away from Salt Lake. Oh, got it, yeah. Or the best hotel in St. George. Either thing. Either way. You know, I vision all the time for things that are going on in my life because life is always changing, isn't it? And every time you hit a problem or a, a, I don't want to say problem, a challenge, uh, everything, every time something wants to come into your life or that you feel like you need to move in a different direction, then you vision yourself. What we do as a group here is to vision for the center itself or for the larger community. So or, something's too big. There is nothing too big. Can I vision for world peace? Absolutely. I, it would be good if I had some kind of clue about what that means. Because right. it could mean that the planet goes dead and then we've got peace everywhere. Right. Right. So, I, you know, you've got to be real clear. Yes. She's got a mic. I can't hear you. Could it be too small? I, I, no. It's just... This little exercise or visioning no. thing, it can I be could already I already placed that in a in an area, just a small thing. That's why I was telling them this is so therapeutic, you know. That yeah, I I all you I gave did, me an I, answer. I think I've been searching for. So it was just beautiful. Cool. I'm glad yeah. you could, you could visualize whether you wanted chocolate chip or peanut butter cookies. <laughs> okay, is that little enough? Okay, who else? Yes. 
So I have a son that will be applying for college shortly, and um, we sat this weekend and we visioned as a family what is the highest and best for him. So he does well in school, loves to play the piano, loves soccer, but what, how does God move through him to serve the world? So it's that connection. It's not going somewhere for a big name or to get a scholarship. It's like, how does my son Jasper serve the world in a way that serves him? So that connection as God is our source, we really tap into. So we reflect, we think, we process it because the answers are all within. But we just don't take time or we get beguiled by certain things in life that we think, oh, we should be this or should go there. But how does spirit want to work through me and through my son and how can we tap into all that is and all that's possible within ourselves so it just takes time uh -huh. yes Libby. Libby no 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 you okay I'm Sue I know oh okay. I'm confused <laughs> I'm old my brain doesn't work anymore okay <laughs> so um, I, I'm listening to this, and, and I'm, I'm seeing, and I answered my questions, but it's not something that just is um, relatable at this moment. Okay. When you talk about your son, um, I can relate to that. I have grandchildren in college, and, um, but sending them off, I'm hoping that all their education and all their prayers and all their involvement growing up from infancy on up will help give them those answers. Yes. I think it's very important that when we do raise our children with faith and um, that that does carry them when they're not with us, yes. when, they're, when they fly away and out on their own. Oh, absolutely. And, and so that's what... Uh, how I feel about that. Yes, yes. And along the way, uh, you, I guess you could vision for being the best soccer team in the city. You know, you could do it at all levels. That's the joy of it because it works yeah, everywhere. It works. Yeah. I have one graduate from Brown University. Ah, fabulous. It, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So she's already been doing it. She just didn't know what to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Okay, you're ready to try this? Good. Let's, you know, and take a deep breath and let's meditate together. Go to that place in your heart or in your brain, in the world, that helps you know who you are. And simply breathe. Feel the feeling in this room. That feeling of curiosity and caring for each other. Take another deep breath and just breathe. What a wonderful place this is to be in. And regardless of your spiritual background, whoever you see God, we know that it is here in this room, in our hearts and in our minds. There is nowhere that is God that God is not. In this beautiful place inside, there comes to mind something 
some feeling, some awareness that you would like to have in your life. It could be perfect health. It could be a feeling of prosperity. It could be a feeling of community. Whatever it is for you, focus there for just a few moments. And when you are ready, consider this question. What is the highest visit vision for this expectation? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Imagine it done. Imagine the feeling of having it done. Once you have that vision fully in mind, we'll spend just a couple of minutes So you can truly embody what is the highest vision. Does it make you smile? Hmm. So with that vision firmly planted in your mind, ask a question. What must I release? in order for this to come about. What's in the way? What will naturally go away as soon as this becomes real? Not what do I have to do, just what must I release?
And if that feels good now, now that we've dug the hole, we ask the question, what must I embrace? What is new that I must allow into my life to support this vision? Now ask yourself, what skills do I have? What are my strong points? What talents, what gifts come to me as we create this vision? Don't let that little voice in your head say no. What gifts do I have? What talents do I have? What do I attract to myself in the creation of this vision? And finally, if you're ready, what else needs to be known? What more can be said that hasn't been said? And so it is done. Now, the most important part is to release it. Don't immediately go into doing. Allow this to stay in your heart and in your mind and in your breath. But let it just be right now. I know and you know 
that ideas firmly thought show up automatically much of the time. may not look exactly the way you thought it would, but I can promise you it's on its way. And so we release and we let it be. We come back to this space, to this room. Breathe a little, wiggle a little if you need to. I hope that was a good experience. Does anybody have anything to add? Yes, sir. Release, absolutely that's true. Yeah. That just resonated with me, the release. Yeah, because what would you do otherwise? You'd decide to get busy and make it happen, wouldn't you? Don't do that. Let it come to you. You don't have to go after it. Who else? Or avoid having it happen. (laughs) Yes. Anybody else? Thank you for playing with me. It's such a joy. And please know that I'd be happy to help you. If you want to implement this anywhere, give me a call. I'll have some cards out here that you can have, okay? Love you guys. Reverend Cindy. I get to sit down now. Thank you, Myrna. Reverend Myrna. So a couple of things about visioning. I just want to give... um, credit to Michael Bernard Beckwith, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith at Agape International in Los Angeles. He's the one that wrote the book, Life Visioning Process. And um, yes, I'm a CSL minister, but first I was and am an Agape minister. And he is my teacher. And that's who I learned from. And that's one of the reasons why I know how important it is to vision. Now, like Berna said, release at the end. Here's the cool part of visioning, you guys. You don't have to know when, how, why, or where. You don't have to know those particulars. Just hold the vision. I'll give you a quick example. It was maybe about 10 years ago and I was a staff minister, and, uh, or actually I was still in ministerial school, and I was very busy doing lots of different jobs because I was focusing on my schooling. So I didn't have a full-time gig. And I thought, you know, it would be great to have something that was steady, that I knew, I knew income was coming in and I was, it wasn't so up and down. And what did I do? I started visioning about it. This is what I kept hearing, just paint, just paint. So I'm an artist. I went to art school when I was 19 and I haven't painted, hadn't painted in uh, 20 some odd years, a long time. And every time I sat down to vision, same thing, just paint. So finally I said, "Um, I, I think I need to really honor this. And someone came up to me and said, hey, Cindy, there's, a, there's this art studio and you can rent a space there really inexpensively if you go help the kids teach, uh, teach the kids how to, do, how to paint and stuff. And I said, well, that sounds interesting. So I, I go and I go into the studio and I'm walking around and I'm filling it out and I love the concept, but, you know, it, didn't, it just didn't resonate for me. Like, the space didn't feel like it was me. And I was like, well, okay, you know. You know, it was like an open, but it opened a door, right? It opened the door. So then I saw this ad for a job on Facebook. And it, and it was for uh, uh, being a teaching instructor at those, uh, you know, those paint nights, right? Um, sometimes it's sip, sip and paint, you know, right? And uh, I thought... Well, that sounds kind of fun. Let me just go check this out. And I I called the woman. She called me right back. We had a conversation. She said, oh, you'd be perfect. Because I told her what I was up to, that I was was in ministerial school, that that, um, my path, and that I went to art school and this and this. Anyway, she invited me to go to a paint party. She led it. I observed it. And then afterwards, we went to 
we went to a coffee shop and she said, okay, here's a canvas. I want you to teach me how to paint this painting, something I'd never seen before. And I'm like, well, okay. So I just sat there and, and taught her how to do this painting. And she said, okay, you're hired. I said, great. Let me just fast forward this. I had no idea how this would serve me. Not just my artist self that missed painting, but myself as a, as a minister, myself as a human being. I started with paint parties for like, you know, 10 people, sometimes kids, to being one of her, her highest ranked paint instructors. So I painted with uh, The Gap and Sony and all these big corporations, pharmaceutical companies. Sometimes 85 people I'd be teaching how to paint with a microphone. You know, I needed more practice. I needed to be, to be good in front of a large group of people. Um, I needed to be personable. I needed to be patient. I needed to read the crowd. I needed to do all these things that just helped me be where I am today. So it wasn't necessarily about the painting, but it did provide me with that steady income I was looking for, but it provided me with so much more. And that's why visioning is so powerful. Because it, it came through me from a higher source, my, my higher self. You ever, you ever heard that, that term higher self, essential self, soulful self? The part of me that is truly always connected with the one. That part of me that, that is always leading me, that, that is, is very intuitive, and it always has the answers to any questions that I might have. That's why we vision. Um, another story is the, the community that I was staff minister with, Agape Bay Area, this was at the end of 2019. And the community visioning we had was, we had a beautiful facility, but everybody in the room, most everybody, kept getting the same message, it's time to move. It's time to move. And this happened maybe five visionings in a row. And finally, leadership, we said, okay, there's something about this. We need to pay attention. So I set out on a mission to see where it is we could move. And I found this beautiful synagogue who wasn't using their, their, their um, sanctuary on Sundays. And I went into them and I said, uh, we're looking for a space. And they said, oh my gosh, we just had a community leave. And um, we didn't even advertise, but this is perfect timing. And I told them who we were, Agape Bay Area. And the woman I was talking to, Dee, she said, Michael Bernard Beckwith? And I said, yes. Oh, I know him. My, my, my brother and sister went to school with him. So I said, okay, this is great. Anyway, we ne negotiated this beautiful deal. So here comes 2020. We all know what happened in 2020, right? 2020 comes along and we're there January and February and then the world stops. Now this community, they said, well, if you're not in the room, if you're not using the facility, we are not gonna charge you a dime. Right. So we instantly went online because we had our own um, tech guru, like Raj here in the back of the room, who makes us always sound good and look good. Thank you, Raj. We had our own tech guru named Matt. He got, we got online immediately. And uh, for what, almost two years, we didn't have to pay a dime. And it got us um, in a very strong financial situation so that when we went back in person, we were a whole different organization. That's the power of visioning. So if something came through strongly for you today, this is what I ask. Like Reverend Myrna said, don't sit here and start making the list of what you need to do. Make something for your mirror at home or your refrigerator with what your vision is and look at it every day. 
and sp spend time with it every day. Reverend Michael said when he started his community 30 plus years ago, what he saw in his vision was different satellites and he had no idea how that was gonna happen. And it took 20 some odd years for it to start happening. And now he does have satellites in the Bay Area, um, it, back east in Orange County. But it took that long. For me, when I was getting that painting message, it didn't take long at all. You know, it was literally maybe three months that it happened. And I know people that things have happened right away. So that's what I wanted to say is, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen right away. And be open and willing for it to happen right away. Who knows? So I want to take some time to be grateful for this community that prepared the lunches, that prepared our sanctuary. Um, first, I'll just start with, with Raj since I'm looking at him. You know, oh, he's hiding now. Um, Raj is our guy, and you guys might know him from interfaith um, celebrations and music and things like that. Um, he, he's uh, well, he's just simply the magic man. You know, he always makes us sound good, and he goes with the flow when I throw hiccups at, into, the, into the flow at the last minute. He makes it work, right? So um, I hope and wish and know that every community has someone as magical as Raj for their AV team to make them look and sound good. Um, then we have a whole community of, you know, just like all the communities in here, I'm sure, we're based on volunteers. We can't do what we do unless people come in and say, yes, I want to support what you're doing here, your ministry. So there are some in this room, anyone that helped, um, or even I'll talk about the practitioners in a minute, but our volunteers and some are also practitioners, go ahead and stand so we could just give you some love. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's a lot more that were here earlier today and yesterday getting ready, um, and we'll properly thank them. I want to say something about our practitioners. We have spiritual practitioners in this community, and they are the, the uh, prayer arm of our organization. And that's who they are as, as beings on this earth. They're here to pray. And um, one of them in particular, Lana, stand up again. This is Lana. She took on this event, organized it, and um, got the crew together to make these fabulous lunches. And a little secret, she's a minister in training. She just embarked on ministerial school. So um, let's just thank Lana, you know, for putting together such a great team and... and um, and next is the practitioners. Practitioners. You can't go anywhere, Linda. Practitioners, stand up. Yes, our practitioners, we, we, we have more, but these are the practitioners that are always holding consciousness for this community. Right? This is what they do on, yes, every Sunday they're holding the consciousness. Every Sunday they're here to, to pray with people that are looking for prayer. So... Um, I'm just, you know, forever grateful for these beautiful souls that come through these doors that, that want to be in a community like this. The other thing I wanted to say to my interfaith family is I love it that we can all come from different backgrounds, different belief systems, different faiths, and be in the same room and, and solve and resolve issues and challenges that we all have. And that's what I love about our particular faith is we're non-denominational. We don't care what background you come from. Um, in fact, my, my chiropractor started coming to the meditation service um, and he's a LDS gentleman and he needs to be where he needs to be on Sundays at like noon. So he comes to our first meditation service so he could just meditate with us. So that's what, that's what we're all about here, is everybody's welcome. 
everybody's welcome. And it's just fabulous that we get to also host um, Rabbi Allen and Andalyn, their community that is here once, once a month on a Friday night. This coming one is early, right? April 5th. So they're here, they're here every, uh, yes, so she's always got her flyers ready to go. So um, this is what we're all about here at our center. And I'm glad that we got to give you a taste of visioning. And is there any other questions or, or comments? And we can, we can sign off after this. Any, anything out there? Okay, I'm going to invite Lana up to the platform. And any closing remarks, my dear, and, and then offer us a benediction to finish. Thank you, Thank you Reverend Cindy. Before I pray us out, um, there's something more important, that there's more food outside. So if you want a sandwich, an apple, a cookie, water, coffee, tea, please take some as you leave um, here today. I just want to say it is so nice to see so many different faiths, and I'm so hopeful for my children, for my family, for my world, that we're all here because we just love God in our own way. So you really give me hope today. So thank you, Reverend Cindy. Thank you, Reverend Myrna, for that. I'm going to close us out. We do something called a benediction, which is a five-step prayer. It won't be that long, so don't panic. Um, but um, it's gratitude, recognition, unification, thanksgiving, and bless, and amen. So I'm going to lead us through those five steps. So just hear those words that I say, and it just introduces you to how we pray at the end. So if you feel comfortable, just please close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. And let's do that again, inhaling. And exhaling. And one last time on your own. So I am so grateful to be here today with all of you. All of you who love God in your own unique way, in your own unique path. Celebrating you, your congregation, how you serve. I'm just so grateful for the multitude of faiths that are here today. I'm grateful that I live in a country where I can express myself in this way and as a woman in this way. I'm so grateful that we live here in Salt Lake City, Utah, founded by the incredible Mormon faith that invited us all here in its own way. I'm just so grateful being here today with you. And so I recognize that there is just one here, one mind, one God, one presence, one power, one love, one divine intelligence, one truth. And the God I call is the presence. That that presence breathes through me, is me, as me, that my words are God's words, that my thoughts are God's thoughts that the money I have is God's money, that I am simply here to serve the one that created me and that which I will return to. So I am unified with this presence in my life. And so I am thankful for our beloved minister, Reverend Cindy, for grounding us, enlightening us today, for Reverend Myrna, how she serves in the visioning team here at our center for all the volunteers who welcomed us, who made us lunch, who just served our faith in such a great way. I am so deeply thankful. And so, with one heart, with one mind, we simply say, and so it is, amen. Namaste.